Normally, when I cover a teen show, what I like to do is provide in-depth studies over multiple videos. Unfortunately, I've been unwell. My body is falling apart. The medications I'm on and the treatments I'm going through leave me exhausted, and I'm simply too drained to give Teen Wolf the proper care it deserves at the moment. I'm going to get my health back. Don't worry. I will get better. I'd like nothing more than to go season by season, as I usually do, but I can't do that right now. What I can do is something very special. I'd love to present you with this, a short, postmodern analysis of Bianca Lawson in Teen Wolf. My so-called life, saved by the bell, the new class. Sister, sister. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Dawson's Creek, Bones, Save the Last Dance, The Secret Life of the American Teenager, The Vampire Diaries, Pretty Little Liars, Teen Wolf. Bianca Lawson has been through all of it. She is the unsung queen bee of the coming of age and teen genre. She's played a teenager for 20 years. She was ever-present all throughout the teen show renaissance that revolutionized television, and I'm madly in love with the characters she played. By following her characters throughout all of her different roles, we're able to track several interesting developments within the coming-of-age and teen genre. We're able to be captivated by a timeless beauty. We can find ourselves completely mesmerized by the characters she portrayed and by the crystal clear clarity of her performances. We're also able to chart the visibility of black actresses in a genre comprised mostly of white faces. We're allowed to question why it seemed so difficult for her to become a series regular on most of the shows she acted in and whether or not her exclusion from the main casts was ethnically motivated. She was talented, her craft was sophisticated, and she was unbelievably sexy. It's difficult for me to consider an option other than, because she's black, her exclusions from the main cast, and on account of those exclusions, larger paychecks from the WB. I think her appearances on the Vampire Diaries best acknowledge these possible transgressions of the past. Kevin Williamson showrunner of both The Vampire Diaries and Dawson's Creek, Lawson acted in both of those shows as well, cast her as an ancestor of the Bennett bloodline. In The Vampire Diaries, Cat Graham's character literally speaks with Bianca Lawson's voice. The characters Bianca Lawson portrayed paved the way for characters like Bonnie Bennett. Kevin Williamson used the ghost of Bianca Lawson to investigate the ways that the coming of age in teen genre continues to haunt itself. I was extremely impressed by the poetry I found in that. Bianca Lawson consistently transcends boundaries as the audience instantly develops attachments to her characters. By the time she'd play Maya on Pretty Little Liars, everyone had a crush on her. I find it fascinating that by following the career of one single actress, we are absolutely able to put together a remarkably robust picture of the teen and coming of age genre as a whole. Through Bianca Lawson, we can witness the rise, reign, and fall of teen television from its earliest artistic strokes in 1994's My So-Called Life all the way to the atrocity exhibition that was MTV's Teen Wolf in 2012. My favorite scene in Teen Wolf is the opening scene of the 11th episode of the second season. The episode's called Battlefield. Stiles Stalinsky is essentially in a therapy session with his school's guidance counselor, Miss Morell. It's a completely beguiling scene that features Bianca Lawson's most entrancing performance. Lawson portrays the counselor, and I find it best to view Styles in this moment as being representative of the teen show in its entirety during this scene. Styles being symbolic of all the ups and downs and agonizing narratives of the teen show art form. The teen show art form at the very end of its rope. 
Who better to psychoanalyze the teen show art form than Bianca Lawson herself? There's no better individual to provide psychological treatment. Bianca Lawson has been there from the start. In Teen Wolf, she offers guidance to the art form she'd spent more than two decades navigating. The actor who plays Styles deserves a small amount of recognition here. Dylan O'Brien perfectly understood the assignment. His performance in Teen Wolf is very funny and sensitive. He might be the show's most consistently impressive performer. It's a nice touch that, in this scene that I believe is full of such immense postmodern power, the character chosen to symbolize teen television itself in front of Bianca is also the show's most engaging cast member. O'Brien runs through the core cast members of Teen Wolf as he provides Lawson with a diagram of the show's uncompleted narrative systems. Lawson listens carefully, always with a beguiling expression on her face. Her performance on Teen Wolf is perhaps the most beguiling one in teen television. It is enchanted and hypnotic. There's a puzzle to Miss Morell and a mysterious quality to her inviting looks. O'Brien shares with her his torments. She tells him about hypervigilance, persistent feeling of being under attack. The teen show is where hypervigilance is just status quo. O'Brien employs the use of a drowning metaphor to express himself, telling her he feels as if he's underwater, desperately needing to breathe, but morbidly understanding that if he did, he'd surely drown. Lawson says that he shouldn't open his mouth and shouldn't let the water in. It's a reflex, Styles counters. It would happen anyway. And that's where we come to a beautiful revelation. She says, but more time to fight to the surface. He says, I guess. She says, more time to be rescued. O'Brien counters with, more time to be in agonizing pain. I mean, did you forget the part where you feel like your head is exploding? Bianca Lawson says, if it's about survival, isn't a little agony worth it? O'Brien argues, but what if it just gets worse? What if it's agony now and then and it's just hell later on? Bianca Lawson answers, then think about something Winston Churchill once said, if you're going through hell, keep going. The way Lawson delivers that last line sends shivers down my spine. It also inspires me. And I suspect it inspires quite a few people who watch this scene. Teenage experience is often one of seemingly perpetual agony with no hope. Lawson, from all the combined experiences of her teenage characters, knows all too well that there are several ways to die trying. Teen television itself sits across from her in the form of the show's comic relief character, and Bianca guides the character who represents teen television as a whole to a space of hypersensitivity and a previously unexplored emotional outpouring takes place. The werewolf metaphor is best used within the teen framework. It means a transformation is underway. The original 1985 teen comedy understood this too. The werewolf metaphor can be extremely useful when trying to tell a story about puberty when young boys feel equal parts abomination and superpowered. The werewolf metaphor is transformative, and Teen Wolf capitalizes on it exceptionally well. Showrunner Jeff Davis, who also created Criminal Minds, uses the paranormal themes and narrative beats and exploits of the X Files to tell his story of adolescence. Sometimes coming of age is pure hell, and maturity can be viewed as the art of drowning. If you're going through hell, keep going. Bianca urges the coming of age and teen genre to hold on, to stay at the extreme edge of oblivion, to remain intact on the verge of death, and to resist filling up your lungs with water until the very last. If it's about survival, isn't a little agony worth it? If it's about a genre continuing to exist, isn't it worth the decline? If it's about the teenage experience of reaching maturity, isn't it worth sacrificing your emotional well-being? 
The truth is, teen television is exactly like the teenage experience itself in this metaphorical loop. It's ultimately better to experience the worst than to experience nothing at all. Lawson, with all of her experience within the genre, the characters she's played having directly impacted the lived experiences of teenagers for generations, understands all too well the cinematic tragedy of a failed character arc. In Teen Wolf, she insists that hell itself not simply be experienced, but experienced well. Drowning may be inevitable, but it's not imminent. Rescue may seem unlikely, but it's not impossible. You only truly start to drown when you let the water in. The lived teenage experience is all about staying emotionally alive for as long as you can. The story of teen television is all about staying emotionally alive for as long as you can. The teenage experience, like teen television, keeps going through hell. Bianca Lawson, the queen of the art form, attractive, charming, beguiling, deceptive, spent her entire career in the moonlit open waters of teen angst. And she's kept going. She's seen it all the rise, reign, and fall of teen television. This scene in Teen Wolf is positively beautiful because it expresses so much about the art form and it uses the form's most recognizable and everlasting actress to voice itself. Bianca Lawson is more than continual. She is eternal, and her words in the scene are eternally felt by all. How do you become eternal? How do you stay that way? The answer is perseverance. You become eternal by endlessly persevering. If you're going through hell, keep going. Bianca Lawson is going to do what she's always done. Maintain the balance.